Actually, it was a big dream that came true because my first album, Naz, was released uh, in Iran as well in a very underground way, of course. And I understood Iranian uh, musicians really wanted to connect me and to say, hi, we love uh, what you do. And I say, hi, I want to hear your song and your, uh, your uh, music. And then we kind of started to be in touch. So the minute I approached them, asking them if they want to participate and cooperate with my new album they said yes some of them say yes and then they say no some of them say yes and stay and some of them pulled their song back because they were very afraid it was a very challenging path to go and the most uh, uh powerful thing that i can say that we we always kept um you know remembering the fact that we're doing what we're doing because we love each other 
and there's a lot of curiosity to meet the other side. And it's funny because we're very similar. We're very, very, very similar. So I can say for me, it was to, to for the first time, you know, know my brother and sisters and work with them and, and have lots of love during this uh, um, creativity underground recorded album. As you said, your first album in Farsi was Nas. It was difficult for you to sing in Farsi when you speak just a few words of it. No, it's actually much more easier for me to sing in Hebrew. Um, I can say that the minute I understood that I need to sing in Farsi, it was a big um, message that came through my, my soul and my mind. I understood that I have to make this circle to close, to make this closure, to understand who am I? You know, it was kind of crazy to live with this double character being Israeli and Iranian at the same at the same day I was born. I mean, I tried to connect these two extreme ends to one personality to be the woman that I want to be. And the minute I understood I want to sing in Farsi, it was easier for me to sing in Farsi. Of course, I insist not to have or to work on some Iranian accent because it's not my story. My story is that I'm telling my layers, you know, and one of my layers is that I'm also Israeli, so I didn't want it to be heard, to 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 be heard like a Iranian singer. It's not my story. I'm Israeli Iranian singer. Um, yes, but it was a very very uh, easy thing for me to uh, sing in Farsi. Much more than talking, by the way. You was born in Israel, but your parents they moved to Israel few years before the Islamic Revolution. I have visited uh, Israel and have uh, several uh, Irani-Israeli friends. Every time I visit their homes, I have the impression to cross a country, going from a country outside their house to another country inside their house. Inside, everything remembers me Iran. The food, the language, the music, uh, and everything else. How was your home? I mean, your parents' home. It was a home like you described. And um, I can say more of the outside, uh, you know, um, like symbols, there was a lot of inside symbols, like the, the culture, and the education and the way that they teach us how to be with our manners, you know, like Iranian good girl or Iranian good boy, uh, the music, um, everything that goes with the Iranian from the inside, from outside, from time, you know, from year to year, we, we, we became more Israelis, but from inside it was much, much more, um, Iranian uh, behavior and you cannot take out Iranian uh, soul from Iranian person even though he lives in other country you know and I felt that I was born in Israel to both Iranian parents but I belong to Iran because they came from Iran and they Iranian and they act like Iranian and they speak Farsi and like you know I, I was very confused um, so for your question, the outside was exactly what, like you described, but the inside was much more, you know, um, established, you say, or, or, or powerful. The Islamic Republic considered Israel a hostile country. Iran's leaders speak about the destruction of Israel. On the other hand, Israelis consider also Islamic Republic a real threat to their security, to the security of their country. What are your thoughts about this? Um, it felt like um, for the first time I'm getting to know myself better because I'm getting lots of uh, love and support from the 
people who lives in the enemy country, Iran, you know, it feels like that we can leave politics, politics outside and write songs together and sing together and play together. It's very, very, very um, crazy to grow up with such a curiosity to my parents' land that I cannot visit. It's like I was, I was, you know, growing up with longing to a country that I don't even know, which is imagine like a lover that you imagine all of your life, but you don't, you know, you're not allowed to touch and to see and to visit, but you don't even know this love, this, this person. So I felt that when I collaborated with them, it was easier for me to, to it, 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 it made, it made my pain easier, you know, it eased my pain, you know, it's, um, it made, it made me softer. I'm much more, um, optimistic, I can say, and less angry. My rage is out because my shows are so happy with, uh, lots of great music that, uh, Israeli people wrote with Iranian people and people dancing to it. I feel like every show is another step to a great revolution of uh, rejoicing. And um, this is my message. I think this musical project is actually not about me. I'm like, uh, I feel like I have uh, this mission and I have a lot of uh, message to the world and to my daughters and to myself that there is a lot of hope between these two countries. Do you know Iranian singers? Who is your favorite? First of all, I can go back to the 70s and until today, my idol and my inspiration is the singer Gugush. The fact that she had to stop singing in, in the top of her career um, when the revolution just uh, started and the, the fact that she she's telling about herself. She sat on a, on a sofa for 21 years and then she raised herself up and moved to the US and she's, she's, she's having a great career. So she's a very, very uh, great example for femininity and, uh, and being artistic wise, no matter what's going on. And, and the fact that Iranian women are still muted since the revolution that they are not able to sing um it kills me on a daily day in, on a daily bay it kills me on a daily base i mean i cannot stop about this fact that they're not free to do this pure thing and it's to sing so she is a symbol for freedom uh and for being a woman and i love her and today I know a lot of Iranian singer men in, in Iran and a lot of Iranian singer and musicians women, but they are not able to perform outside uh, of Iran and they are not having the possibility to perform everywhere. So they perform to each other, women to women. And that gives me a lot of uh, inspiration to write my song Zan Bezan. They, they are singing to each other um and i think it's amazing they're not giving up and this is how uh, women can make revolution you are not just a singer you are also an actress uh, recently we have seen you uh, acting in the first season of tv serial tehran tell us about this experience and how was working with uh, iranian artists oh it was amazing it was one of the best experiences ever because I also met Iranian artists, uh, um, Iranian actors and actresses uh, that made a big decision to work with Israeli uh, production company and to understand that they might not be able to visit Iran anymore. Uh, and they made a great um, choice, I think, because they put themselves at the first place, their art. And I remember there was one thing that we, we shot in, in Athen, Athens, and it was very cold and we had this uh, big uh, heater and we started, you know, to sit by the heater and then I started to sing Mahtab. 
and everyone joined me and we all sang Mahtab and it was so beautiful and powerful. It was the first time I actually met literally face-to-face -face Iranian real people. It was amazing. And I remember the director stopped the shooting and he said, what's going on here? It sounds very well. I stopped everything because I wanted to, to hear you and to see you guys. It was a very powerful moment of uh, joyful sisters and brothers having this uh, song like near the fire can, you know, it was a good memory. The whole production was a very good memory for me. You are not the first singer in your family. I know another very famous one. Oh, maybe maybe the 50th one. I mean, we goes back in generations and my grand grandfather uh, was the singer of the Shah and my grandmother, she's a singer and my, my aunt, she's a singer and her daughters are singers and my two daughters might be singers because they sing very well. It's, it's a crazy family. <laughs> Obviously, I'm speaking about Rita Jahana Frus, uh, who has become one of Israel's favorite singers and uh, recently was chosen uh, to lead one of the 12 beacons uh, that uh, every year they light in occasion of the, the Independence Day ceremony. She's, the, I think, not because she's my aunt and I love her, but I think she's the most uh, powerful, amazing uh, singer in Israel, for sure. She's, she's number one. She's amazing. She's, she's uh, basically, uh, I think when she, she just uh, got famous, all the, maybe, you know, maybe Israeli singers are going to kill me, but I think most of the singers, they understood that she's going to take the first role, you know, because she's really, really powerful and very special and amazing inside and outside and uh, talent wise, you know, she's, she's amazing. Do you want to say hello to our Iranian readers, obviously in Farsi? I can say something that I know. Um, سلام به همه شما عزیزم در ایران، اسرائیل و جهان من خیلی خیلی دوستتون دارم بیرز